Stunk, Zell, and Krim are the most epic Saku girl reviewers. That is to say, our three heroes are connoisseurs of the seductive female body. Their goal in life is to visit each and every species brothel establishment, taste their products and rate them. From elves to fairies, golems to magma people, to even actual succubi, none are beyond their reviewing expertise and none can hope to escape them. It's just another day in the inn, that is Stunk and Zell's regular spot. Nothing's out of the ordinary and they're having a good time. Well, nothing that is, apart from Midri acting super flustered and taking breaks on her shift. A confused Krim is enlightened as to why this is by the two brothel reviewers keeping tabs on the situation. As a birdmaid, Midri's time of the months involves shooting out a couple of unfertilized eggs in an extremely lewd display. Speaking of which, the duo feel a calling and decide on the latest establishment they're going to visit. An egg-laying Saku girl house. Just as weird as it sounds, this is a place where people can pay to sit and wait for one of several Saku girls to lay an egg. Not only is the erotic factor of the act itself pretty appealing to many, especially reptilian species, but there's also those who are there for even more depraved reasons. That is, to eat the eggs that are being laid, fresh out of the cooch. While they're pretty much down for anything on an average day, Stunk, Zell and Krim find themselves absolutely disgusted when a lizard woman followed by a crocodile lady are the ones to put on a show. However, right as they're about to leave, they're reeled back by the arrival of a birdmaid Saku girl. Well, a certain kind of one at least. The penguin subspecies is a pretty niche one, but Krim and Zell are pretty into it, so Stunk sticks it out till the end. Despite that, the overall experience from the weird show to the even weirder customers gets the establishment resoundingly low scores from them all. Also, a nice and proper beating from Midri when she finds out what inspired their little adventure. The reviewer's latest destination is a roleplay focused succubus establishment known simply as the boss's evil lair. Here, customers can dress up in various outfits and request something from several roleplay options. From a master made roleplay to an evil slaver and his victim, pretty much everything is available here. After picking out a girl in scenario, you take them to a private room to have the time of your life. While the rest of the guys enjoy it quite a bit, Krim finds himself struggling greatly with the strong non-con themes, something that only endears him to the ladies of the establishment. Well, that and his absolute donkey dong, but the wholesomeness is pretty important too. All things said and done, the establishment gets a solid score from the reviewers and their guest for the day, Kan Chow. The following day, the reviewers find themselves with a highly rewarding quest that they wish to take but can't decide whether they should go on account of it being a week-long quest away from town. In order to prepare for the week away, they end up going to the establishment that birthed all other succubus houses, the illustrious succubus tower itself. Home to thousands of genuine bona fide succubi, the tower is the perfect place to go if you want to get your ideal succubus at a moment's notice in every way that matters. The only catch is they'll drain you absolutely dry to the point that you won't even feel any loot urges again for several days at a time. This is why adventurers going on longer quests frequent the place before heading out. One needs to only look at Krim's experience in the tower to find the truth in this claim. By the time he finished, he was already multiple times past when he thought he was finished if you catch my drift. Altogether, the succubus tower would get a perfect score, but the debuff it provides by the end of the experience makes the reviewers bring it down to scores of 6 and 7 out of 10. Over the end, the usual readers of Stunk and Co.'s reviews notice that the adventurer have been gone on a quest for quite some time now. Indeed, Stunk and Zell have gone on a quest to refurnish the castle of an ancient vampire named Count Deleville. After finishing up with the job there, they're introduced to the undead brothel neighboring his castle known as Necrowave. Here, Stunk enjoys a zombie girl while Zell goes with another strange species. The worst experience of the night is their guest reviewer, Bruce. Thanks to his hypersensitive beastman nose, the only undead sucky girl he could do it with was a literal skeleton and, well, that is not very fun. As for the best experience, that goes to the Count himself, who has his own personal harem of vampiresses. After returning home, Stunk and Zell learn that Krim has finally visited a brothel all on his own without them having to convince him. They're as proud of him as they're interested in the review he's written for a highly appealing place that features magic lotion play. While ribbing at Krim, the two are made aware of another group of reviewers who are pretty much ripping off their job. Unfortunately, since they don't exactly have any genuine grounds to sue or anything like that, they decide to just enjoy their reviews as well. One of the other reviewers turns out to be an adult film director who swings both ways named Bina Banana. And let's just say her review gets very steamy. 
After that review, the adventurers find one that sounds too good to be true. A sucky girl establishment located in a magic metropolis that's gotten perfect scores from every single reviewer who's been there. To their joy, Ken Chow bursts into the inn at the precise moment and tells them he's made arrangements for them to travel to the metropolis. Without a second thought, the reviewers stand to join him, but not before extending an inviting hand to their comrade-in-arms, Krim. Thanks to the centaur porters hired by Kanchal, the group are able to reach the magic metropolis in just four days' time. Once there, they instantly head to this supposedly perfect establishment. And by golly, is it perfect. For just 5,000 gold, every single customer gets a completely fresh personal clone of the archmage Demia. Not only is she an absolute knockout, but all customers get to stay with their Demia clone for a full three days. On top of that, the clones simply disappear at the end of three days, so customers are truly free to do whatever they want with them. Stunk is struggling with whether or not he should give her a 10 rating right after the first night or a 9. But just the next morning, when he finds her making breakfast for him and treating him like a king, he knows this service can't be given anything less than a solid 10. Zell, Krim, and Kenchal experience similar ecstasy with their Demia clones. Zell is able to expand his knowledge on magic theory by leaps and bounds in those three days with a clone of someone as knowledgeable as Demia, and he has plenty of fun in between studying as well. Kenchal gets to play out his darkest fantasies that regular Saku girls don't go for. And as for Krim, he gets a full lovey-dovey package that leaves him wondering if this is what it's like to have a girlfriend. By the time their three days are up, each of them have totally fallen for their Demia clones and tearfully bid them farewell. All that's left now is to spread the word of this perfect establishment to every corner of the lands. Every human and demi-human, nay, every man in the world must know of this place. Luckily, that's a task their centaur porters are more than up to. Back home, a mysterious man enters the group's regular inn and stands before Midri with one request. He'd like a raw egg. As it turns out, the egg guy is an incubus who's been busy on a personal quest to visit each and every Saku girl establishment Stunk and the others have reviewed negatively. He's made it his personal mission to try every single type of woman there is and focus on their best qualities. Quite frankly, Stunk is convinced he'll give anyone a 10. His bragging certainly isn't hot air though, as he actually does seem to have some massive talent as an incubus. In fact, the Lilim brothel that left them scarred some time back was cleared out by him in just one day all by himself. As he continues boasting though, someone suddenly stabs him from behind right in the heart. An Ani girl who's furious with him has arrived. The Incubus took off with all her money for his dream of going on a worldwide Saku girl tour. Ridiculously enough, they make up right there on the spot and get carried off by the local authorities. Krim shows concern for the Incubus, but Zell reassures him that the guy won't die. After all, Incubi have a second, even stronger heart near their lower head. The next day, the group are lamenting Krim's lack of money due to their brothel-going habit. Right as they're brainstorming ways for Krim to make some quick cash, Kenchal arrives with the solution to their problems. Thanks to an arrangement he made with the Porter Guild and another with their rival reviewers, they're now receiving absolutely ludicrous amounts of money entirely from their reviewing gig alone. With their money problem solved, the group prepares to hit the town with Krim and Tao only to get slammed into the ground by Midri. She insists that they at least let Krim finish his shift first. Unfortunately, by the time he does finish his shift, the fellas are blackout drunk and end up dragging him to an alcohol establishment, essentially just a place where you drink until you're absolutely battered and then spend the night getting a different kind of battered. Unfortunately, while it seemed like a good idea at the time, the group awakened the next morning to find themselves with no recollection of the previous night. Even worse, it would seem they blew every bit of the money they got yesterday on a sucky girl crawl. Worst yet, the reviews they wrote in their drunken state are completely worthless, so they can't even salvage any money from this. And so, our heroes set out on a journey to regain their lost riches. They go on a series of quests in quick succession, taking out more and more threats until, as crazy as it sounds, they've actually saved the world from an apocalyptic threat. While going through business cards from the brothels they visited in the past, Stunk and Zell finally find the recommendation card they were given for the demon brothel known as Devil Hole. Though they're a few months late, they still decide to hit the place up. With Krim busy on an errand for Midri, it's the perfect time too, since he reacts badly to demonic energy. The adventurer duo plus Kanchal and Bruce head over to Devil Hole, where they're treated like VIPs the instant they show the recommendation card. As it turns out, demons are a race that always follow contracts down to the letter. Hmm, who would have thought? 
The reason so many people have bad experiences with them is because they read their contracts carelessly. As for the reviewers, they are given a night of total ecstasy, resulting in a great review the next day. The reviewer's next great adventure takes place on the night of New Year's. As a tradition for good luck, they head out to visit their favorite Saku girls of the past year, but are crestfallen when they find that all the brothels are already either full or reserved beforehand. They're just about to give up completely when the fairy brothel owner hands Stunk a card for a place she promises will satisfy them. True to her word, the recommended brothel turns out to be a dream eater brothel. A place where they can revisit any Saku girl they've done the nasty with in the past through their dreams. Plus, once you wake up, you can have some fun with the dream eaters themselves, too. With glowing reviews from each of the reviewers, their new year is starting off with a positive blast. In this fantastical world full of dozens of different species, the job of interspecies reviewers is never over.